Welcome back in, guys, to the GSMC Chip Shot Football Podcast brought to you by the GSMC Sports Network. I'm your host, Manny Maradiege, live today on Friday, September the 6th, to close out the week. What a game we had last night to officially start the NFL regular season. We're going to talk about everything that happened, my thoughts, my takeaways, previewing a little bit of the game tonight between the Packers and the Philadelphia Eagles down in Brazil, and also answering a big question that I think a lot of people have on their mind after last night is whether or not this loss to the Kansas City Chiefs yet again solely falls on Lamar, or again, is it more of a team view issue? Those questions will be answered on today's show, plus a couple more previews that we have talking about Dak and also picking the winners of the rest of the games in week one. All of that is coming up on today's show. Make sure to stick around to watch that. But before we get started talking about the game last night, I'd like to remind you guys, if you have any questions regarding anything now that we are fully back into the swing of things in the NFL, if you have a question, a comment, an opinion you'd like to share on anything we talk about on today's show, please make sure to share it. Your input is a big part of what makes this show great, and we always appreciate your guys' insights on anything you want to comment about. And now, if you want to make that absolutely sure and guaranteed that your message gets on the air and featured on our show, there's an easy way to go about that. Just use the Super Chat feature that we have available for you guys now. Just click the dollar sign at the bottom of the chat box to send in your Super Chat. This guarantees that your message gets on the air, but also it's a fantastic way to support our channel. We rely on your support to keep bringing you the sports content that you love, and we appreciate every bit of it. So go ahead, don't hesitate to use that Super Chat button and let us know what you guys are thinking. But also, there is still the alternative option, the old Tim and Donations link, gsmcpodcast.net. If you do prefer to use that to leave a comment or a question with that method as well. We couldn't do what we do on this channel without your amazing support and we're always so thankful for you guys when you guys are active and interactive with our shows and also helping us out as well. But now we could talk about last night's game. A lot a lot went down in that game. I think we could pick out a bunch of different storylines, questions going forward and impact off of this game, right? It was a perfect start to the 2024 regular season. If anything, if we can pick out anything from this game, and if this is any indication of what this season is going to look like, we're in store for a great, awesome year, right? Just based off of last night's game. Ultimately, the Chiefs did survive a late comeback attempt from the Baltimore Ravens to win out that game 27-20. Reading out some of the big performers from last night's game. You obviously have Lamar Jackson, 273 passing yards, 122 rushing yards, nearly 400 yards of total offense for Lamar. One touchdown as well. Uh, Derrick Henry, their big addition to their backfield in Baltimore. He had 13 carries, 46 yards, and one touchdown as well. Then you look at one of the breakout stars, I would say, Isaiah Likely, again on the Ravens' side, 9 receptions for 111 yards on 12 targets. A touchdown as well for him, and he followed that alongside Zay Flowers, who was also very active, but the stats might not reflect it. You know, 6 receptions, 37 yards on 10 targets. And I mentioned the targets for these two guys because it was interesting, and it will play out to the point I'm trying to make later on with this preview, but... Isaiah Likely got 12 targets, Zay Flowers got 10 targets, and also Justice Hill, their running back, was the only other player to at least get 8 targets in the passing game. Everybody else had around like 5 or less for the Ravens, so that's something I will point out a little bit later. Then, on the Chiefs side of things, Patrick Mahomes, almost 300 yards in passing yards, 1 touchdown and 1 interception in yesterday's game. Rasheed Rice, not a breakout star considering the form that he was on to end the year last year. He had seven receptions, 103 yards, no touchdown for him. And the real breakout star, I think, for the Chiefs that uh, really made a name for himself and what he is going to bring for the Chiefs offense. You look at Xavier Worthy, two receptions last night, 
one carry, 47 pass or receiving yards to his name, 21 rushing yards, and two total touchdowns for the rookie wide receiver out of Texas. And that's a lot. That's a lot to break down there. Uh, a lot of standout performances from last night's game, and that's why we got such a back and forth crazy game, especially the way it ended. And addressing that point on how it ended, you know. Isaiah likely catching that touchdown in the back of the end zone, but the tip of his shoe, the sole basically of his foot was stepping out of bounds. And I honestly thought when I looked at it in real time before they started zooming in, I thought they were still going to call it a touchdown. I just felt that, you know, there's close, there's close measurements on what's out and what's not out. But then there's something like that where like, like, the you couldn't get a smaller margin of his shoe to be out of bounds to still call it out of bounds. I thought it was so small of a margin that they were just gonna let it go and call it a touchdown anyway. The Ravens obviously felt the same way. Lamar Jackson saying afterwards that he thought it was a touchdown and he's gonna still keep believing that it was a touchdown. But um, if I was to make a decision on it, I think they made the right call because you'd rather be playing it safe in that situation rather than you know, always having that doubt in there, in there, um, I think most people would see that, yeah, there is a little bit of that, uh, part of his cleat stepping out of bounds, so ultimately, it was the correct call, but it was a very devastating call, right, as time winds down, Lamar somehow finds Isaiah Likely in that situation, and he makes a perfect throw, Isaiah catches it perfectly, you know, there's no question about that, but it's just the feet, the last thing that the receivers need, uh, unfortunately for the Ravens, it was out of bounds. The game ends there. And very salty responses, very salty faces on all the Ravens players. Uh, if you guys watched the game uh, as well last night. But on that note, on the the last play by, um, by Isaiah Likely, the takeaways that I took from that just off of that last, you know, action and just basically overall in the game was that um, it really shouldn't have been too close, honestly, like that, like we're talking about a play in the end of a game where I honestly didn't feel like it should have been that close based on the fact that the Chiefs had an opportunity there to score what most think would have been a touchdown with Isaiah Pacheco running pretty freely up the right sideline, but he just dropped the pass. There was another pass that Juju Smith-Schuster dropped on the goal line as he was making his way down. That was probably going to be another touchdown. And this could have been a 31, 30-something game to like 20 points that the Ravens had in the end. And, you know, when you look at that margin, if the Chiefs execute on all these plays, you know, you could say the same for the Ravens executing on some throws that Lamar might have missed as well. We'll get into that later on in the show, but... Um, it really didn't seem that close to me just because as we predicted or as I talked about on yesterday's show, it just looked like the Chiefs have less to figure out. They have less to figure out and more so trying to enhance what they already have, right? They know all their pieces. They know how they sort of fit. It's just a matter of execution with them at this point of the season. In the first game, they're just trying to execute everything a little bit better. Whereas with the Ravens, a big takeaway that I had from them also was that, um, similarly to the Chiefs, they have a lot of new pieces, obviously three new offensive linemen, some new pieces on the defensive side of the ball, and to them, it looks like they're still figuring everything out. With Derrick Henry, like we mentioned, he was probably one of the more underwhelming performers from last night, 13 carries and 46 yards, like I said, and uh, it just seems like they still don't know how, when to use Derrick Henry and what seems appropriate to, you know, be patient enough to still use Derrick Henry, right? Because at the beginning of the game, that first drive, they convert on a bunch of third downs. Derrick, once they get into the red zone, they use Derrick a couple more times. They get close enough, Derrick dives into the end zone and they score. It looks awesome, right? It looks like Derrick is going to fit in very nicely. And I think he will eventually, but with this team, as the game went on and as the Chiefs, you know, responded, they started, you know, picking up some steam. You head into the second half and it just looked like the Ravens got a little bit antsy, like, like almost like Derrick Henry wouldn't serve them too much of a pur purpose while they're trailing, if that makes sense. It sounds crazy to say, but the way 
that they executed in the second half, the way that they deployed Derrick Henry in the second half, they didn't really use him that much, I think, in an effort to obviously come back, right? But I think at that point in the second half where they weren't really using Derrick, it was still very early to sort of give up on the run game, but we kind of saw it back in the AFC Championship game as well where the Ravens just tried too quickly to play their card and try too quickly to get back into this game where I think slowing the pace down a little bit, slowing any momentum that the Chiefs could have had would have served them a little bit better and Derek I think would have served that purpose some more. And you have that um, piled up with the fact that Lamar also had a big game with his legs and I think that really you know, is great. It is exciting. It's very, it's a great thing to have if you're Lamar and um, you're the Ravens, right? But running that much is great. Having all these design runs is great, right? But to me, it also signals the fact that they're not really getting too open on the outside. Or it's either that or Lamar, there's a problem with the execution of some of these throws. And I don't think that's the case because I like the progression Lamar has made over the course of his career passing wise but it's either that or they're just not getting open and that's why I mentioned the targets before right Isaiah Likely and Zay Flowers basically were the only guys that were consistently becoming an option for Lamar just as Hill as well coming out of the backfield it signals also to what I just said about Derrick Henry so that's something else that stood out to me in terms of these takeaways with this team they have to still figure how everybody's going to fit, when and where and how to use Derrick Henry as well, how it fits with their offense, how to play it off of Lamar and his running ability. It's all there right now, but it's all sort of just, you know, just piled up in a big mess right now. They kind of have to mold it and shape it out to how they want to execute it. And it's obviously way before anything really, truly, you know, matters in terms of playoffs or anything like that. But of course, you're left sour not winning this game. You felt like you had a great chance to win this game. But in terms of the Chiefs, and I won't really mention too much because I think it shows exactly who we thought the Chiefs were, right? Um, the offense looks way better like than it did last year, and we knew that coming in. And they didn't even have Marquise Brown. Just wait until he shows up and plays alongside Xavier Worthy, Rasheed Rice, and Travis Kelsey. You hardly really heard his name throughout the game, but that is all right now. You know, it seems like you don't necessarily need Travis to have seven catches for like 90-something yards each game. He more so needs to just pick his spots. They had it on a big third down conversion where Travis Kelsey got open. Having him more in that role, appearing when Patrick is scrambling and they have that great connection, that's all right now because you have all these great young receivers around this uh, Kansas City offense that I think just reaffirms what we had believed going into this game and it's looking like it's hard to pick out something bad to say about the Chiefs honestly um, because the defense stood out as well they played very well the offensive line for the Ravens is something else they need to figure out like I said like much of the other things but regardless of that with all the questions and doubts that we had about the Ravens it was still a great game a fantastic finish to the opening game of the NFL regular season and I don't think we could have asked for much more you know the drama the back and forth and everything the controversy it was all wrapped up into one game last night and it was very exciting to follow that up with the game tonight it's going to be hard to do but we're going to keep our hopes up in that we're going to preview the Packers and the Philadelphia Eagles coming up but before that I had a question to bring up as well, just off the bat of this game. We're not going to leave this topic just yet. We're going to answer the question whether or not Lamar should take most of the blame for last night's loss, or is it more on the Ravens for the penalties, the execution, and things like that. We're going to answer that question right after this break. You're listening to the GSMC Chip Shot Football Podcast. 